As the son of actor James Brolin, given that his stepmother is Barbara Streisand and that he's married to Diane Lane, Josh Brolin is pretty much Hollywood royalty. So you'd assume that his rise to fame would have come easily and quickly. But this wasn't the case. Josh initially had no interest in becoming a film star, but while working on a student production of A Streetcar Named Desire, he was bitten by the acting bug. His feature film debut was as the older brother Brandon in The Goonies. From there, Josh got steady work in films like Bed of Roses, Night Watch, Hollow Man and Into the Blue, but never quite hit the big time. A part in Quentin Tarantino's Grindhouse saw Josh's star once again on the rise and gave him the opportunity to work with the likes of Russell Crowe, Denzel Washington and Ridley Scott in American Gangster. I was really passionate about this project. I mean, really, really, once I read it, I said, I have to do this, you know. Russell, always wanted to work with Russell, always wanted to work with Denzel. There's been a few movies that have passed by that uh, where I really, I really wanted to work with Denzel on them, and this is it. This is the, this is the movie that I get to go head-to-head -head with the people I want to go head-to-head -head with. Josh's leading man status was cemented in No Country for Old Men, where he gave one of his most brilliant performances to date. And for the first time in his career, there was even some Oscar buzz. But when they were casting the film, the Coen brothers just couldn't see Josh as Llewellyn Moss and refused to even audition him for the part. Refusing to take no for an answer, Josh shot his own audition tape on the set of Grindhouse, which finally convinced the Coen brothers he had what it takes. It was hard to find. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know why. We didn't think it would be. We thought it'd be really easy yeah. because in our minds it's kind of the regular guy. And we thought, well, you know, we just need a good, clean kid. Um, it turns out it's not that easy to embody that without either being dull or being not, again, not of the region, which is a bad thing because... Not convincing as a cowboy in a way. You know, that you either kind of have or you don't. It's a hard thing to act. Josh actually grew up, grew up on a ranch. Not in Texas, in, in Central California, but um, he's definitely, uh, he wore the cowboy hat before he showed up for this part. I mean, he really just kind of fit in really naturally. Roland was a natural for the part, utilizing his own background as a rancher to inform the character of Llewellyn Moss. I grew up on a ranch. I grew up with 65 horses, you know, feeding 65. I didn't like it, you know. But I, 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 you know, I grew up working hard on a ranch, and I know these guys really, really well. You know, Moss is all he is is just a compilation of a lot of guys that I grew up with. You know, and they're all exactly like him. So there's no this is far fetched, this or that. All these guys have these principles. All these guys would do exactly the same thing given this circumstance. So you know, if I have a, you know, if I have a question about my hat. I call one of my buddies. I say, how should I put in it? Would I wear my hat in a restaurant? What kind of restaurant is it? Well, it's uh, Bob's Big Boy. Absolutely, keep that hat on Bob's Big Boy. You know, well, it's a nicer, it's a nicer, no, 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 definitely take it off. If you're gonna drink wine, take it off, for sure. Josh underwent a complete transformation to become George W. Bush in W. When director Oliver Stone first approached him about the role, Josh initially said no. And who says no to Oliver Stone? Uh, I didn't have any real knowledge of what the film was and what it was about, and I had a, more of a cosmetic, you know, reaction to why do you want to do that and do you want to make a story about Bush when he's already in the public eye so much and uh, you know it was just a reaction it wasn't a big deal it's become a big deal because I said it and now everybody asked that question but um, I think you know initially one would think I would even think that if Oliver Stone approaches you about anything that you just it's like the Woody Allen syndrome you just say yes you don't care about reading it or the Coens you know and uh, I, I do feel that way about Oliver ultimately um, I just wanted to know what his agenda was and I found out he had no agenda and the script there was obviously no agenda written into it and a very it was just a very interesting compelling um, story that follows this guy from from college until uh, at, right after the war the pressure was really on Josh because at the time the film was being made, George W. Bush was still the President of the United States. Did he feel any responsibility to the real George Bush? I felt a responsibility to Oliver to come as close as I could to uh, um, an accurate characterization and live up to uh, 
um, and not be too uh, afraid with trying, you know, with being beaten down with other people's perception of how I should play him. So I kind of, you know, I went into isolation and just kind of did my own thing. I didn't go out when we were when we were doing the movie. I, I stayed in. I didn't talk to a lot of people. Just uh, studying these scenes and, and trying to uh, make them as interesting as possible. It's my interpretation of it. I don't apologize for it for a second because all he is is another guy. It's like if somebody were to make a movie about me. Can't stop it. Why would I want to stop it? It's somebody's perception of me. They find it interesting enough to make a movie about it that's going to be out for a couple of months and then it's going to be gone. You know, this is our version of that for George W. Bush and his life. And it's worth doing, especially within the impact that he's had on this country. Josh came up with an interesting technique to help him perfect Bush's accent. He would phone hotels and talk to people with the same accent so he could hear and practice the speech patterns and intonations. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess it's what, crank calling, prank calling. I do call a lot of places. I call places where these people are from and I talk to them. They're not necessarily, you know, crank calls, but, but yeah, I just have fun, man. I just mix it up and try and, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but yeah, I, 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 I try and have fun. After spending all that time getting to know George W. Bush, did it change Josh's opinion of him at all? No, no, I'm personal. My personal perception of him. I like his, I like his relationship with his wife. I love his relationship with his family. Um, I think the guy is a decent guy. I think the guy truly had great intentions in bringing the Mideast to the Middle East. And, uh, you know, uh, they were curtailed again and again and again and again and again. There were other agendas. Roland's career was going from strength to strength. He earned an Oscar nomination for his mesmerizing performance as the politician Dan White in Milk. And for Josh, taking on the controversial role was a no-brainer. It was the simplicity of the screenplay. It was the content, the story, who it was about. Gus, Sean, Emil, I mean, a lot of factors where you can't, if you were to say no, it would be kind of on a moronic level, you know, that I just looked at it, I knew who was involved, and I said, I'll do it, whatever you want me to do. And I didn't even know he wanted me to play Dan White at that point. I just wanted to be involved in the story. Brolin admits he found his character, Dan White, to be morally repulsive, but he felt it was an important story to tell. And with Dan White, it's very negative because it's diametrically to oppose to everything that they were working toward. So not an not a easy, fun character to play, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm here. Wall Street Money Never Sleeps gave Brolin the chance to team up with director Oliver Stone again. Josh becomes a new gecko, to my mind, a very sense, a sexy, handsome, but devastatingly dangerous man. And I worked with him on W as he played George Bush. He's a wonderful young actor. He's not young. He's wonderful middle-aged actor. Playing a stockbroker came naturally to Josh, who loves to play the stock market in his spare time. He's so serious about it that he set up his own trading station at home and created a website that gives investors historical stock overviews. There's no end to the possibilities of accumulation. And I think uh, having traded myself on a very, very small level, um, I understand what it is to get caught up in that moment of greed where you go, I understand the kids are upstairs and they need to eat, but I, if I have 15 more minutes, I may make that much more money. And then they'll be able to eat more when, honestly, um, they're not eating. That's the reality of the situation. So uh, to tap into that greed and to allow yourself to um, lose your identity and reconfigure your identity within that is, uh, you know, morally completely bereft. And that was an interesting thing to be able to play with in this movie. It's taken some time for Josh to achieve success in Hollywood, but his experiences have given him an unusual perspective on being a film star. Where there was one point where I, I was doing <laughs> films that I didn't care for so much. Not that I felt like I was better than the film at all. I just would see the film and it wasn't gratifying to me. So I stopped doing that and I started landscaping for a while. And then I got into day trading, and I was day trading for three and a half years. So, <clears throat> and, and, and from out of necessity, money, you know. And, uh, and then things changed, I guess, with the Coen brothers. But what I find in the through line is the, the lack of pretense. There's an extreme lack of pretense, you know. I almost used to feel like talking about acting, you know, the perception of actors can only talk about themselves which is, you know, almost true, but, um, that, but you know, and, and almost a shame in talking about movie making and storytelling and acting and this and that. 
I, I don't feel that anymore because I'm around these guys who love storytelling. They love talking about, you know, it's whether they're making movies or whether it's cowboys sitting around a campfire trying to outdo each other. It's the same kind of feeling to me. And uh, so th there's, a, there's a real pride, a, a, a humble pride that I have in working with these guys that love to tell stories. It's their life line, you know? It's their food, it's their nourishment, and I love to be around them. There's no doubt about it. Josh Brolin has worked hard to forge a career in Hollywood. He's no longer just known for being James Brolin's son or Diane Lane's husband, but he's a true star in his own right. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better, on screen and at mnc.tv.